All right, well, I'm glad that you're here, and I'm glad that you took time out of your afternoon to be a part of what's going on, okay? So whether or not you're excited about what we're going to talk about tonight or not, you get to hear it anyway, and uh, so I'm excited. You know, it doesn't matter. Uh, so many times we get so wrapped up into everything going on around us that we forget about um, how important things are, and you know what I saw last night um, as an adult... And, uh, and as a youth pastor, it inspires me um, to keep going on and to keep pushing on and that there's hope. So many times we get so wrapped up into what school that we are part of or what sports team we're a big fan of. It's, it's either Seaville or Taylor County or, you know, the Bengals or the Titans or somebody, whoever, uh, the loser Cowboys or somebody like that. But anyway, um, we get so wrapped up into... To, to that that we forget about something. But last night I saw something on the basketball court in between uh, Kimmelsville High School and Taylor County High School. And uh, I saw one of the players get knocked down. And uh, I saw a, a player from Taylor County actually uh, help the Seville player up and give him a pat on the back. And you know, to you all that doesn't look like anything, but to me I noticed that. I'm like, man, that's, that's awesome right there. That right there shows that even though we're against each other, and even though this is friendly competitiveness, uh, there's still enough of a heart to give. And so tonight what I have for you all is I'm going to talk about um, the season that we're obviously in, whether or not we want to be here or not. For a lot of us, uh, maybe as adults, some people get, man, they get like zoned out. Everything's Christmas. They wear like candy cane earrings and they put on perfume that smells like gingerbread cookies. You know what I'm talking about? They jam to Christmas music. Me, I, I enjoy Christmas and I like it, but I'm not like all out uh, singing uh, Deck the Halls everywhere I go and, and everything else. But I know some people really get pumped up about it. So obviously we're in this season and there's nothing we can do about it. It's time for Christmas to come around. But when I say Christmas, what do you guys think of? Jesus. Jesus. Uh, say it loud. Jesus. Okay. All right. What else do you think of? Decorations. Decorations. Presents. <laughs> what? Giving? I hear giving. What else? What? what was it? Giving. Oh, giving. Yeah, giving. G I V I N G. Food. Yeah, amen. Happiness. Happiness. Family. Family. Love. Tradition. Jesus. 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 What else? Snow. Yeah, <laughs> Even though we hardly ever see a white Christmas, Spencer. Santa Claus. You do what? <laughs> JT said Spencer's not old enough to even see a white Christmas. That's funny. All right. All right, so stay with me. The reason I ask you what you think about when you hear the word Christmas is this. Um, how many times do you think people get so wrapped up about the commercialism of this holiday that they forget about the true meaning of what really goes on. You think it happens a lot? You see, now I ask you all what you first think of when I ask the word or say the word Christmas. And obviously, we're in a church, so one of the first things we're going to hear is Jesus. But if I was to ask you that same question while you sit in a group of your peers at school, what would you say? Would you? Because it's easy to say we would when we're with other Christians and other believers. But when it comes down to it, do we really proclaim the name of Jesus Christ and understand the meaning and the powerfulness of it during this time of the year? You see, because I think people have gotten so wrapped up in our society worrying about everything else that we forget about what Christmas really is. And so tonight, I want to come from Acts chapter 20. Verse 35, and there went a battery. Acts chapter 20, verse 35, and if you have that, I'm going to ask you to read along with me. Acts chapter 20, verse 35, and it says this, In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words that the Lord Jesus Himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Now how many of you all in this room like to receive gifts? 
Really? I mean, nobody else likes to say, I, okay, all right, well, that's fine. Because I had $100 for each of you tonight, but for the ones that didn't raise your hand, we'll just keep it, okay? I'm just kidding. But anyway, here's the deal. All of us like to receive stuff, but how many of us like to give? You see, we can say we do, but if you really had to give. Now, we think about giving. I've always heard coach used, especially when talking about tithing, it says you're not giving until you give till it hurts. Okay? So if you had to give something that would hurt or take away from your life, would that truly be giving for you? Now, how many of you be, would be willing to give now? If you had to take away from something that you enjoy, you would still be willing to give. Okay, a few less hands. See, the thing is, is we always like to give and give, and we all especially like to get. But can I tell you some staggering statistics? Can I tell you that there are 30,000 children in the state of Kentucky alone, who will go to bed homeless tonight. That's the entire county of Campbellsville in the city of Greensburg. That's, that's all of us. Every single one of us. The entire county of Taylor in the city of Greensburg. That's how many children there are that will go to bed homeless tonight in the state of Kentucky alone. Now, I don't know about you all, but when I hear that and when I think about that, I'm like, man, that's messed up. How could it be so many people, so many children who don't have a place to lay their head? And you know, if we're honest in here tonight, unfortunately, there are some of you all in here who may not have a home to go home to. There are some of you in here tonight, when you lay down and you close your eyes, you're probably going to go to bed, but you're not going to have a mattress or a bed to go to bed on. It'll be a couch or a floor. For some of you in here, you may not have a pillow to lay your head on. Some of you will go to bed tonight and wake up in the morning and not have the opportunity to take a shower or a bath. You see, I, I know this. Some of you will wake up in the morning, you won't have anything to eat tomorrow. And if it wasn't for school tomorrow, you wouldn't have anything to eat for lunch or dinner. And in case some of you don't realize this, on Wednesdays, we have the opportunity to feed you all. And it's not a steak every week, but for some people in this room, it may be the only hot meal they receive all week long. You see, some of the boys and the girls that you fellowship with and you play ball with and that you're sitting with right now, some of the people in this room are some of the statistics I'm talking about. I've asked you before, but how many of you are a part of a broken home? How many of you have never seen or you don't know your father? How many of you have never seen or you do not know your mother? Anybody? Okay. A couple hands. And so here's the deal, guys. No, it's not rampant. It's not the entire room. But here's the deal. We've got so many people who are hurting and in need, Sarah. And so what happens is we find ourselves worrying about simple things like decorating and, and going shopping and getting all this stuff for ourselves and so that we can give to others when there are people that are in here tonight who are going to bed hungry, they're going to bed cold because there's no heat in your house, you're going to bed in the same set of clothes that you wore yesterday, today, and you're going to have to wear tomorrow. And I'm not making fun of you, I'm not calling you out, but what I am doing is letting other people in this room know that the true meaning of Christmas is not this, guys. It's not to worry about Santa Claus and his little reindeer. It's not to worry about him sliding down a chimney and bringing tons of toys. It's not about snowmen or candy canes or anything else. It's all about peace, love, and joy. And the only way that we can enjoy that peace, love, and joy at Christmas time is through Jesus Christ. Father God, Lord, thank you for the opportunity that we have to come together. 
Lord, thank you for the opportunity that we have to worship your name. And Lord, I thank you for each and every young man and young lady under the sound of my voice tonight. God, thank you for bringing them here safe. And I pray that, Father God, that this word may push forward and, Lord, pierce into their soul and into their heart, Father God, that they would have a deep understanding of the true meaning of Christmas. And, God, I pray that these young people would be what would begin and, and be the start of a revolution. That, Father God, that we would not get so wrapped up into all the worldly stuff that we forget about what you have in store for us. So, Father God, help us to focus, help us to concentrate, and help this word to go into our hearts so that we may understand. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to turn to Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 21. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. And I want you guys to read along with me if you've got it. Romans chapter 1, and we're going to start in verse 21, okay? And I want you to listen to this, and I want you to see how close this resembles us as a society today. Now, I've referred to the Scripture multiple times because it is an exact replica, in my opinion, of what America is today. Check this out. It says, For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God, nor gave thanks to Him, but their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal human beings and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in their sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. So they exchanged the truth about God for a lie. And they worshipped and they served created things rather than the Creator who is forever praised. Amen. Unfortunately, when I mention Christmas, Mark, a lot of people say Jesus is the first thing to come to mind. But in all reality, we see a fat little chubby guy with a belly full of jelly with a long beard who comes down a chimney and drops off presents. And unfortunately, when we think about Christmas, we think about all the new things that we want, the iPads and this and that and everything else. And I'm not saying that's bad. I'm not saying it's bad to, to want. I'm not saying it's bad to receive a gift. It's not bad to do that because that's, that's okay. But guys, what I am, I am so sick of seeing in our society is people your age, my age, and older. Each and every one of us. And we continue to... Let time and time and time pass us up without carrying on the tradition of Christmas. Just out of curiosity, how many of you all, when it comes Christmas time, have sat down with your family and you read the Christmas story? That is a normal tradition for you to sit with your family and read the Christmas story. Okay. Okay. Just out of curiosity, now I'll tell you what, I'm not going to do that. When you all understand and we understand that we have a greater purpose, and it's just like I talked about last week when, when we can't let go because God's got something so much bigger for us, but when we understand as a society, and this includes you all right now, when we understand as a society that there is so much more than a silly old Santa Claus. Now listen, I'll be the first to admit, I love, I love looking at Christmas lights. I don't like the fact of decorating. I think some people way overdo some stuff. Uh, that's my opinion. However, I really, 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 really found this really cool thing to where they play music and the lights do this, you know, stuff. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Well, there's a house and I found it this week. And I'm, I'm, I'm like a kid, man. Like I get set up there and I'm like, wow, this is awesome. You know, and like Paige, Paige is like, Daniel, we need to go. I'm like, no, I can't leave Santa Claus. He's dancing in the window. You know, I'm just, I'm amazed. 
And so I, I get excited about that stuff. I, I'm not hardcore Christmas. I'm not, I'm not the Grinch. I used to be, but I'm not the Grinch. And, but I enjoy it. But here's the thing, guys. It's okay to enjoy it, Gary. It's okay to be in the Christmas season. But what I do not want us to lose sight of is this. When Christ created us, He created us to show peace, love, and joy to all mankind. And what we do instead is we hold it inside. We bottle it up. And we keep it so nobody else can receive it. When was the last time you did something nice for someone? Today? How many today? Be honest. Yesterday? Day before? If you ain't got your hand up yet, you need to have your hind end kicked. I mean, seriously. It, what does it take to open the door for somebody? Oh, here, let me hold the door for you for five seconds while you walk through. What does it take to say, Hannah, I hope you're having a good day, and if not, I just want to tell you Jesus loves you. Wow, that took a whole lot, didn't it? And see, the thing is, is we say that Jesus is the meaning of the season, and we say that He lives in our hearts, but in all reality, we are these fake people living with this real reason to celebrate that turns around and does nothing but glorifies ourselves. You see, we bring in all these things and all these people still go to bed hungry and cold and with no place to call home. But our lives revolve on a normal basis. And so you say, you ask me now, Daniel, what are you doing to make a difference in someone's life, right? Because we always like to do that. I don't know about you all, but I like to do that. Somebody will get up and talk about how everybody else is doing something wrong and I think, what are they doing? Well, see, that's the thing. Because when I preach, Donnie, I'm not the kind of preacher to attack you because typically when God brings it on my heart to tell you all, He's typically telling me I need to do something different. So what I'm doing tonight is challenging us as a whole, each and every one of you all, my adults and myself, to do something different. And what I'm going to encourage you and what I'm going to ask you to do is this. We have tomorrow and Friday left in this week. And so for some of you, this is going to be a big struggle, just getting through two days. But I'm going to ask you for two days to do something kind for someone else. Whether it's pay for their food in the car behind you in the drive through or in the restaurant. Maybe it's to hold a door. And young people, whether you think so or not, it's still very polite to say yes sir, and no sir, and yes ma'am, and no ma'am. And so, I want to ask you to do something. If you see a classmate drop a book or a paper, pick it up. If a teacher or someone needs help, stop just for a second with your busy life and help them. Because guys, here's the deal. We're told that in the story of Jesus, when Jesus was born, okay, when Jesus was born, we are told that an angel came in. And the angel says, check this out. Okay? Now I'm paraphrasing. He says, check this out. The Son of God's been born. And He has been born to bring peace to all mankind. And so guys, if peace looks like this, if peace looks like the malls being crammed packed with people worrying about their selves and how big their gifts are and how they can impress somebody else, if peace is us turning our back on those who are hungry and weak and hurting, if peace looks like that, then peace is not measuring up with the peace of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible tells us time and time and time again, that the people that Jesus took care of were those who were hurting, those who were hungry, and those who desired Him. And so if Jesus Christ is the Savior of your life, if Jesus Christ lives inside of you and you claim to be a Christian, I'm going to ask you to do something that a lot of people would be shocked about. I want you to do something so big, it makes it to Facebook. Because here's the deal. 
I constantly see and hear about people saying, in fact, I just read a story today about a, a woman. Um, she said, a, a man started a conversation. He said, um, I told somebody Merry Christmas, and they told me I was politically incorrect. And the woman said, well, if Christians would stop worrying about how everything else offends them and start thinking of everybody else's feelings this time of year, then this world would be a better place. And he went on, he rebuked her, and she said, you know what? She said, you know what sickens me? She said, out of every Christian I know, I can name two or three who are actual Christians. They don't just say they're Christian, but they've actually got it together. They actually walk the walk and talk the talk. And so, if, if you especially can't raise your hand and say that you've went out to show peace, kindness, joy, and love to somebody, even at this time of the year, I am challenging you in the next two days to do something kind. Something that would blow the socks off somebody. And you want to really get them? Make it somebody who would never expect it from you. Make it one of your enemies. Make it somebody who you think is against you. Make it somebody who you really, really would surprise if you did so. And when you do that, when you show them that peace, that kindness, and that love, when you do that, you will absolutely amaze them and show them the love of Jesus. Can you handle it? You don't sound very adamant about it. So I want to ask you guys something. If I was to look back and examine each and every one of your all's lives individually, when you go to school, would your life reflect that of a Christ follower? Would the purchases that you make for yourself and others reflect that of a Christ follower? Would your attitude reflect that of a Christ follower? Guys, this is a time of the year that we are called to be thankful and grateful for everything that God has blessed us with. And a time to realize that the true meaning of Christmas and the true reason we celebrate is not about gifts, it's not about coming together or anything else. It's about the Savior of the world named Jesus Christ who was born in a manger, one of the dirtiest places on earth. He was, he was born in a manger for you so that one day He could die for you. And when we realize and bring to life the reality that Jesus and that Christmas is so much more than what we make it out to be. Guys, the difference we can make would make such an impact in this nation.